Park Sessions, the Upper Magnolia Green Rezoning Update, Dr. Casey. Since I'll be sitting for most of the afternoon, I thought this would be a good opportunity to stand to just uh, welcome and introduce this uh, work session topic. Uh, it goes without saying, I thought myself as the county administrator might be the best one to introduce the topic to you and the speakers that we will have before you uh, today. And so I had some prepared comments that I'd just like to actually read as part of the introduction for the next few minutes. Today is a very unique moment for you. The duly elected Board of Supervisors that represents 365,000 people and for the many citizens, businesses, and prospects watching near and far, we are dedicating this entire work session to a singular topic, the Upper Magnolia Zoning Update. I don't recall in my entire career when we have such a focused work session presented to an elected body. Even uh, a part of your evening session under my comments will be Dr. Uh, Raspiller's Tyler Becoming Bright Point Community College update, which will invariably have many references to the workforce development efforts that exist and can be further expanded in workforce labor pipelines and advanced manufacturing. And he's available for any questions that arise as part of this work session as he's in the audience today. We have been working on diversification of our tax base with quality companies and jobs and where to locate these companies since I arrived here in 2016. And I imagine that that topic had been occurring beforehand. A key sector in which we don't have good representation for the future are potential advanced manufacturing sites. Existing sites are becoming constrained in our county and region, which prompts for the role of the county to partner or to take the lead to position for the next concentration of quality jobs and investment. In addition, the quality of life improvements that can be made in conjunction with these partnerships and their return on investment is a concurrent priority. It goes without saying, these quality of life improvements include better transportation networks, proactive school and library sites, closer retail and restaurant amenities to serve those in that area to mitigate road congestion when citizens travel further elsewhere. Without these efforts, to seek concentrated quality jobs, we will exhaust our abilities to attract many desired companies, have greater fiscal challenges without private business investment, be vulnerable to the imbalances that arise with higher levels of residential development, and result in net job loss elsewhere with longer commutes for our citizens. These situations are what give rise to stagnation, and there are many sad case studies across the country of stagnation. Um, to be proactive, we must never let our community stagnate, and to be proactive means going forward. Today's session and the process before us is about information and processes in going forward. In determining potential sites and being proactive, many were considered and discussed with you multiple times over many months with great questions asked of you for each of these potential sites. However, with additional due diligence and follow-up from your questions, many were eliminated to the very high cost of property, infrastructure challenges and constraints of the property, or potential for private sector to rezone and develop without our impetus. One site arose as preferred site and we became aware of a more intensive residential, residential development interest in Upper Magnolia in early 2020. We focused further on this site in discussions with you. We were fortunate to be presented with an opportunity to acquire the 2,000 plus acres at a reasonable price of $13 million. With your approval, we proceeded with the acquisition as part of our December 16th, 2020 board action that was covered far and wide with the press release whose words still ring true today. As noted in the press release, there was a, also a concurrent effort occurring with our desire to first acquire a middle school site to build a reliever school, middle school for Tomahawk as soon as possible, and if possible, secure additional sites for future elementary and high school pressures arising in that portion of the county and the library. Trying to acquire school and library sites totaling many acres and related site and infrastructure needs in this area could easily have cost us near the total purchase price. We've done our best thus far to create momentum for the middle school with bonds recently issued at one of our lowest rates in history, 1.7%. We hear from many people to be more proactive in meeting citizen and business needs and this acquisitions helps position us, position us to do just that. Since December 2020, Based upon the publicity, we had many inquiries and good suggestions that helped us further analyze and configure this property to be in a position to initiate a rezoning request. That rezoning request was approved by the Board of Supervisors in September 2021 and modified with some additional joining parcels a month later, all with your permission. That started the formal application process for which formal studies and reviews commenced. We also continued to get inquiries and good suggestions informally or formally 
leading up to our community meeting process. As any applicant in a rezoning will tell you, there's much work that needs to be done to begin a process that leads up to holding a formal community meeting and receiving additional input from citizens. I greatly appreciate all the input prior to October and with some community meetings behind us and one uh, in front of us, these meetings and the additional comments we are receiving has helped the county as the applicant and the community development departments as the reviewing agent to best prepare a staff report in February. I don't know what the staff report will ultimately say because it's still being finalized with all the input we are receiving. But I do know that the prior planning commissions and today's board work sessions can only help frame a perspective by which the county develops a staff report suitable for presentation and consideration during the next steps in the process. What I do know is that there have been some major high quality advanced manufacturing announcements occurring in other parts of the country that would have made a major positive impact upon our local, regional, and state economy if they had occurred here. This site competes very well with these other desired national sites for similar companies in the future. And with less sites available, our site is poised to be one of the best remaining nationally if zoned properly. I will defer to our guest and our first speaker, Jason L. Kobe, Interim President of Virginia Economic Development Partnership, VEDP, to address that topic. While he may speak a project in Virginia as a whole, remember our zoning process will restrict it to the uses that you define as permissible. And since we own the dirt, you own the dirt, uh, for others to acquire, any prospects still require many briefings with you and permissions for any ensuing performance agreements and transactions. With uh, the VEDP uh, Executive Director is Michael Dwelling, Vice President of Real Estate Solutions for VEDP. What I also know is that we have a residential growth concerns and related traffic network concerns that through this application and transportation study provides a clear illustration of all the improvements needed in this area of the county in far greater detail and timeliness than otherwise would ever occur, while also trying to mitigate potential residential growth and address school capacity issues that are otherwise already arising. What I also know is that there's so much information to share and we will present the most relevant information today. We will also try and address any questions you may have and be receptive to any comments you or others may have as part of this process. Therefore, after our VDP guest, Jesse Smith, the Deputy County Administrator, will go through the many details associated with this rezoning. Also in the audience, we have a lot of other interested parties that are here and we have staff support from all of the community development functions. Uh, in addition to Dr. Raspiller, who I ref referenced already uh, in the audience that I see and have met, um, is Wilson Floor, President of Go Virginia, Daniel Fitzhugh, President of the Chesterfield Chamber of Commerce and a member of the EDA, Faison Habib, Program Manager, Office of Public-Private Partnerships with VDOT and also an EDA member, Brian Anderson, Chamber RVA President, and Jennifer Wakefield, President and CEO of the Greater Richmond Partnership. I'm sure any of them would be glad to address any specific questions that may arise from you relative to their areas of expertise. I also know that there are representatives from the Commonwealth Center for Advanced Manufacturing and other institutions, while not here, will be watching today's work session live or the recorded version, as well as hopefully we will be posting this soon thereafter to our portal for citizens and other interested parties to see in its entirety. Thank you for your time and attention. We wouldn't be here if not for all the meetings and preparation done over the nearly two years with you and with your very constructive feedback and permissions to acquire the pro property and initiate the rezoning application. I know we'll have homework assignments as part of this uh, county over the next year, some because of the zoning, pro zoning process, some regardless of it, and some that we would need help from outside experts and partners. And in conclusion, I know this homework will include many alternatives for how the Poe White extension can occur. The best manners to recruit targeted retail and restaurants is desired from the community to better contain sales leakage and reduce related congestion of longer travels. And the best manners to prepare our students for the high-tech jobs of advanced manufacturing, including scope of educational facilities, roles of community colleges, universities, and programs like Richard Bland's Virginia fame, future of advanced manufacturing employees. So again, as part of my introduction, uh, again, you'll have two primary speakers, but you have a wealth of talent behind me that is there to answer and address any questions you have or, or take notes for any comments so that again, we can help perfect uh, this process. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to the VEDP.